we are recording. Hello and welcome to the newly formed um, Carbon Crunching Clerics <laughs> uh, podcast, which is going to be a monthly video where we look at the month ahead uh, to what is happening in our church calendars and talk about how we might incorporate creation care into that cycle. Um, the word that I meant to use there was incorporate. I'm not sure how it actually came out. Anyway. <laughs> that sounded good. <laughs> yeah, sounded fine. Yeah, 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 fine. Fine. Excellent. Um, I'm Reverend Sophie and my uh, I'm with my regular co-host, the Reverend Marcus from Langham and Father Neil Hook from Haverford West. And Hello. we together are all members of the Diocesan Creation Care team. So welcome, welcome, welcome. This, this month we are talking particularly about what opportunities there might be for us in promoting creation during remembrance and the, the um, feast the, the season of the, the kingdom. I put my teeth in again, you see? Okay. <laughs> Uh, the, kingdom, the kingdom season is what I was looking for. So, um, <laughs> um, so what opportunities are there um, in this coming month for us? To so this this November is slightly complicated um, because it's kingdom season from the first Sunday in November uh, until the fourth Sunday in November. But Kingdom One has been kicked off its perch by the Feast of All Saints. Um, so you, you, we're kind of going into kingdom season without really knowing it. And then the second Sunday in the kingdom um, is Remembrance Sunday. Um, and we're not quite sure what that's going to look like at the moment. Um, then Kingdom Three happens and then the Feast of Christ the King. And then we have a fifth Sunday in November where we have Advent Sunday. So in terms of exploring creation sustainably, across the liturgical season, it's going to be quite difficult this year because it's quite bitty. So I think we probably would be best to focus on two um, of those um, particular points in November, and that's Remembrance Sunday and the Festival of Christ the King out on the fourth Sunday in the Kingdom season. Yeah, just having a conversation this morning actually with somebody from the Community Council in Langham, just about remembrance, um, because we can't have these gatherings, can we? And um, so I think they've decided just to have uh, a very simple gathering of the Community Council to lay a wreath and, and a prayer, but not to invite anyone. So it's going to be very different this year. But I, I, I'm sure you know we'll incorporate remembrance into our into our services, and people people want want to mark that, don't they? And it, it's an interesting time, remembrance, isn't it? I mean means different things to different different people uh, is, is this element uh, i think we, we can all sort of sympathize with thinking of lost loved ones and those who have sacrificed their life you know to preserve freedoms there's, there's, there's that side but um but i can't help thinking that the original sort of remembrance was a, was like in a response to a, a real disaster you know of the, the first world war and, and let's just let's not let this happen again and i'm sure the sacrifice is part of it but i think I think it was as much as look, let, what, let's remember this catastrophe. How can we live now in ways that make that less likely? You know, and it sort of morphed a bit into remembering the war dead. You know, not that that's that's wrong, but there's more to it. I think that's the thing is there's more to it. And so I think you're right. Of... I think there's an aspirational element where yeah. it's not just about memorialising the past, but thinking about the future and resolving to do our very best to try not to let that sort of conflict and destruction happen again. And unfortunately, um, across the world, there still continues to be conflict. There still continues to be people who lose their lives as the result of conflict. And even in our own country, there are still occasionally members of our armed forces who lose their lives overseas as part of peacekeeping um, forces or um, other strategic interventions by the UK government. So when it comes to creation then, um, it, 
a very easy and simple thing to do would be to um, take the, the, the symbol, the, the, the red poppy, but also uh, have alongside it the purple poppy, which is the poppy that is used to remember all those animals that have died in, in war and in service, uh, right from the horses and the carrier pigeons of the First World War through to um, the present day where we use dogs to uh, sniff for IEDs um, in the Middle East. Um, and I think that's something that, that people can identify with. It can be a bit of a delicate issue, um, but the, the Royal British Legion itself says on its website um, that although they don't provide white poppies for those who wish to promote peace or purple poppies for those who wish to re re remember and promote the uh, ethical use of animals, um, they're not opposed in any way to them being used. So that's something that could easily be incorporated into um, our liturgy. Um, you could add a, a prayer, just a single prayer in the intercessions uh, as we remember the animals, um, because the actual liturgy produced by the Royal British Legion um, has an aspiration for peace in it as well. But as Marcus has said, there's this idea of wider conflict and the impact that that we have upon the planet as the result of the, the violence that we perpetrate one against another. Mm. And I'm not quite sure how we would get that across um, without expanding it in maybe the sermon, in an address or something like that. Yeah, maybe in, a, just in some, some prayers as well. If we're, if we're praying to remember those um, actions that have led to conflict in the past and, and to not not to, to to repeat them I mean it's not too big a step to think actually remember our inequitable use of resources now and how that deprives people of, of you know of the necessary for life and itself can, can lead to conflict so it's sort of the, the sense of justice that's required to live at peace and that we know justice to be the heart of our ecological troubles really isn't it because of our unjust consumption in the richer nations so I think they can bridge it but maybe you know you don't it could get a little bit a little bit a little bit dense but um yeah I think it's just it's that crossover between remem remembering now to live in ways that make peace more likely and I don't think it's too big a leap to think actually we've got to try and sort out the way we care for our natural world you know because that in, in, in effect that reflects what's in our own hearts doesn't it really you know because when it's when it's all conflict and domination in our hearts that, that's expressed politically through violence, but also in, in environment through consumption and domination. So there, there are sort of there are those links. And if we um, if we think about the uh, the victims of warfare as well, in the podcast series that we did for Creation Tide um, 2020, which check out on Sophie's channel, Sackcloth and Coffee, uh, to find that those that five. Uh, part um, series, we did um, explore the idea of uh, migrants and refugees, and quite frequently they're people who have been displaced by conflict. Um, and so that is something that um, we can um, bring in to our uh, liturgy and, and explore, particularly those of us in the Archdeaconry of St. David's in the Diocese of St. David's, because we have now a, um, a group of, of refugees, of economic migrants, who've been housed, ironically, um, in what seems to be fairly poor conditions in a former army camp. Um, so it's a very live issue at the moment. But we also know that there are going to be people who are going to be refugees and economic migrants as a as a consequence of climate change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got in my family background, you know, my grand grandmother was a refugee from, from Germany, so I can only sort of be thankful to the UK for extending that that welcome, you know. Um, and I think that's a lot of people's stories in their back in their background, in their background too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think um, in terms of 
remembrance as well. I mean, we've talked about animals and the, and the purple, the purple poppy, you know, and animals caught up in, in, in armed arm, com, arm conflict. You know, it's not too much of a sidestep to think of the animals caught up in our own sort of, you know, the destruction of our human, human greed, really, you know, and a sort of mass extinction that we're going through now at the moment. It's just so sad, isn't it? You know, and, and, and such an awful indictment of our, our, our way of life, you know, so and if we want to live at, we want to live at remembrance about living at peace with one another, but maybe if that other also includes the non-human creation, you know, it's another sort of bridge with, you know, environmental concern concerns as well. And, uh, you know, and these things are all, all connected on the way we, where we live within our environment reflects what's in our hearts and so on, and conflict with, with others. So there's, there's that as well, isn't it? The, an, the animal angle, I'm thinking a bit wider than just war conflict, but actually, you know, just our human, our trade and our, our, our human systems, you know, causing, causing great extinction. Thinking of, you know, the, the animals that are alive at Jesus's time, but when in Mark's gospel, he, get, he dwells, um, you know, for his ministry, and we, he's in the wilderness. And uh, what animals would have been around him then? Well, some of those are around today, but quite a few of those actually would be extinct. I mean, for example, there was a you know, great wild ostrich that used to roam around Palestine. That's gone. There are a few other animals that used to be there. So um, if you think of it in those terms, you know, quite a, giving it a real religious context, you can just see the change that's happened, you know. And, um, and if you're looking for stuff to do at home because you're not going to be able to gather or do stuff on Zoom, um, and then there are plenty of projects out there themed around remembrance. Um, you know, you can put together a collage of a poppy using recycled materials um, from your recycling bin, different colours of plastics and different colours of cardboards. And if you want to mix up the, uh, the red poppy for uh, remembrance and the white poppy for peace and the purple poppy for our animals, when you do that, um, then, you know, that's something that um, you can do fairly easily. Um, you can also um, make a, um, a poppy windmill, like the type that you have on the beach, um, and you can easily find plans online, uh, and that involves uh, taking a uh, recycling, um, a recycled plastic bottle um, and following a pattern, um, and then you can plant your poppies um, in the garden and watch the November winds blow them up, uh, about. <laughs> Sounds good. I did think about um, sort of a poppy field as well. You could easily get a packet, a packet of seeds, poppy seeds, and plant uh, seeds and watch them grow and flourish between now and next year as well. So it's kind of an ongoing thing that to, mm. to remember the season. Um, I like that. So that's, good, that's a good idea, isn't it? It's a way of, you could have your sort of annual rem remembrance poppies. I mean, I guess you know, they don't always come up in November, do they? But, um, you know, very good for encouraging pollinating insects and so on, poppies, you know, a native flower. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Good thought. We spoke briefly about uh, the Feast of Christ the King and um, <clears throat> other ways that we could possibly um, make best use of the calendar um, this month. So um, what about Christ the King? How can we how can we uh, sort of latch onto that and use that for the for the creation care? Well, just a little bit of background. It's the uh, it's not quite the newest of the festivals um, of the season. Sorry, um, in our calendar that belongs to Creation Tide itself, which we celebrated last month in September. Um, um, but cre um, the Feast of Christ the King was instituted in 1925 in. The, the Roman Catholic Church and soon spread to all the different denominations um, and officially it's the feast of Christ the King ruler of the universe and it's this idea um, was introduced that we shouldn't be uh, we shouldn't ha see ourselves as having dominion over the planet we aren't the rulers we aren't the exploiters of the planet um, instead we are the stewards of all of God's creation, of our particular corner of the universe. Um, and as part of that, there is a call to repentance. There's a call to repentance individually and as a community and as a nation that we haven't lived 
under Christ's reign, under Christ's rule, as we ought. And we've explored in the previous podcast that I mentioned already, as part of the creation season, um, this idea um, of Christ being incarnate, being part of all creation, and our responsibility being part of all creation. And it's all too easy to just concentrate uh, on the festival of Christ the King, on governments and praying for people in um, community, local, national, international governments. But we have to connect that with this idea of responsibility. So, um, sorry, I'm being slightly put off by the fact that the sun is coming through the window. Um, you are looking more me, and more like Father Christmas, though. Yeah, it's making me, it's making me look your, like Santa. Your, does, your so, beard is uh, like it's like the burning bush, isn't it? It Moses. Yeah, yeah well, thanks. Well, it's ginger as it is, so it doesn't really need this um, this extra help. I'm going to shift the position slightly. Uh, there, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I haven't quite realised the background to, to Christ the King that is so, that's so recent until we were discussing it um, mm. a bit earlier. I mean, Christ, kingdom season does, does give, I think, really good opportunities for, for celebrating cre creation care, you know, because the kingdom of God, when all things are subject to, to Christ's rule, it is a kingdom when um, we, you know, God's creation is given its true fruitfulness and, 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 and ability to be itself again. So, you know, if you place out the wider narrative of, of the sort of Christian understanding, Jewish understanding is that, you know, God's created, humanity is messed up, and God is recreating yeah. through the help of Christ and bringing all things back to their original state of blessing. And so it's very much a sense of when Christ is in charge, the created world has its proper place of, of flourishing as well. And you know, that's why we pray, don't we, um, in our Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. So God's kingdom is a place of renewed the creation. Right. So, you know, great, great sort of words of it. The, so words assurance, the words of assurance, the words of assurance, which introduced the confession uh, on the festival of Christ the King are traditionally taken from uh, Colossians chapter one, verses 19 and 20. Uh, For in Jesus Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. So it's that idea of all things um, and that responsibility that we have towards all things. There you are. I think, you know, when, when we get our um, credit crunching cleric sweatshirts, we could have that Colossians quote, you know, thing on, <laughs> underneath. Be credit like, crunching? Credit carbon, carbon crunching. Carbon carbon crunching. crunching. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> me. Yeah. I'm obsessed with my credit rating. <laughs> Oh, are you? <laughs> I mean, the king, yeah, kingdom season, when all things are subject to Christ's rule. I mean, so some of the miracles that Jesus does, I think, um, demonstrate that sort of sense of, of uh, Christ's lordship over creation, not just as a, as, as a picturesque background, but actually showing what's, what the kingdom will look like. So, you know, for a classic example, when, when Jesus stills the storm, the disciples are, you know, on, on a stormy sea, tossed on their little boat on the Sea of Galilee. And uh, Jesus stands up and rebukes the storm and all is calm. And then the disciples say, well, who is this? You know, that even the wind and the waves obey him. And so, I mean, you could take that as just a story of, oh, who's this person with great power? Oh, it must be God. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? It's kind of looking back towards God in creation, who stills the, the, the waters of chaos, you know, and, 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 um, and keeps all things in their proper place you know so that humans and creation can flourish and jesus you know, does that again you know and we see that so there's that sort of sense of the proper peace and harmony over creation that god brings is there embodied embodied uh, in when, when christ is king you know and of course we've got our part to play in that haven't we because we all recognize that you know we, we have to be christ's hands and feet here here on earth um now today you know Guided, guided by his spirit. So that sense of making peace with creation is part of our contribution for the kingdom, the kingdom of work as well, God's kingdom. And creation is, and, and the future of creation is naturally brought into the festival of Christ the King because it's the very last day of the liturgical year. 
uh, and everything restarts with Advent. Um, but of course, the, the, the festival of Christ the King also talks about Jesus's promise that he will come back in power and great glory. And so we anticipate the return of Christ the King as well. And then we start that cycle all over again with the last Sunday in November, Advent Sunday. Um, and we've got the four themes of Advent, which we'll deal with next month. Patriarchs, prophets, John the Baptist, the Virgin Mary, the Nativity of our Lord. And those go through. But the church's year um, is cyclical. It's, it's not repeating on itself. It's like a corkscrew. It's going forward all the time. It's propelling us forward all the time. It's not about repetition. It's about change. And it's about how we as Christians can affect change in the world, in all of creation. So we're very aware um, that the festival of Christ the King is an ending, but also anticipates a re-creation of the church's liturgical year and takes us forward once again. Given that both clerics and non-clerics, um, lay and ordained, are watching these videos, for those people who are lay and are not necessarily um, involved in the liturgical calendar within their churches, what can those people do um, to, um, to talk about remembrance and Christ the King and creation care, the things that we've been discussing? What can they do to, um, particularly in a time of lockdown, to remember those things, to make a difference during those times, and perhaps to to help their vicar or, or or whatever they you know they have going on in their churches. What can they what can they be doing to get their hands dirty, as it were? Well, there's no about getting hands dirty, but this year, um, the Remembrance Sunday is going to be quite difficult. Uh, people aren't going to be able to gather, and I think it actually means that. Um, the 11th of the 11th becomes more important. And in the past, across the country, people who've been out and about in supermarkets, train stations, on high streets, on the 11th of the 11th at 11 o'clock, on Armistice Day, at that moment, stop for two minutes. And that's, an, that's a witness that anybody can do, lay or ordained. If you find yourself in Tesco, um, or if you find yourself on the high street, or if you're just in work, or you're in a meeting, um, whether it's online or in real life, um, and it happens to be an armistice day, and you know it's going to be uh, around 11 o'clock, you don't want to um, upset people. So instead of just at one minute to 11 saying, right, we're going to stop now and interjecting, maybe raise it in advance. Um, but also if, if, you're not, if, if you're not in a, a particularly closed situation, just say to yourself, I'm going to set an alarm on my phone, on my watch, or I'm just going to remember to stop um, and to, to be part of that, that witness that covers the nation. Yeah, that's good. And I'm um, thinking of the kingdom aspect then, as well as the remembrance. I mean, you, you can you can remind your vicar or worship leader of those themes. You know, that wouldn't be a, a bad thing to do. They might be might welcome that actually, because thinking well, how how do we incorporate? You know, your, your cleric might be thinking how do I how do I note kingdom season? You know, over a few weeks, and, and to give it that sort of context. You know, the coming of kingdom of God, which means peace of creation, would be helpful. But then, you know, there's practical things you can do if you think, okay, so Christ's kingdom is about a time when we're making peace with creation. Christ's rule, Christ's rule means peace with creation. What can I, what can I do? What, you know, what sort of peace can I, can I encourage in my own household and life? You know, and if you, I don't know, um, if you've got a garden, you might think about how can I encourage some place for wildlife? You know, I mean, it's not the season for growing things, but it's not a bad time to be putting up a bird box or a bat box or making a little space for um 
hibernating you know, hedgehogs or whatever, a bit of a rough area in the bottom of the gardens. And don't, don't clear it up, you know, make a, make a place for, for hibernating animals, toads and hedgehogs and so on. So there's that possibility. Or if, if, you, if you're not, you haven't got a garden, then perhaps it's just thinking, well, how do I, how do my home household choices, how can I honor creation there? You know, in my shopping, am I trying to seek out those goods which I know don't despoil and exploit? you know, um, uh, the environment. I mean, it's, it's hard to do that sometimes, isn't it? I mean, fair trade, Rainforest Alliance, the sort of, those sort of symbols are helpful. I Can I encourage people to um, take a fast? Because there's a modern phenomenon which has um, developed in society. It's come across from the States and it's referred to as Black Friday mm. and yeah. Cyber Monday, um, when seemingly the whole uh, of the shopping nation goes mad because um, it's the pay packet at the end of November. Um, so there's money in your pocket. So this is the chance for you to go out and buy Christmas presents for your friends and your loved ones. And various online retailers and various big stores discount a lot of big shiny electrical products and, and, and things like that um, and Christmas gifts that are wrapped in layers and layers of plastic just to find one little doodah in the middle. Seriously have a think about fasting, about not taking part in that, about shopping locally instead, about buying something that is produced locally um, whether that is through a farmer's market or online. Um, but that's something that I think that we as um, Christian consumers can do around the festival of, of Christ the King. Yeah, good thought, Neil. I forget about this bizarre thing of Black Friday, which kind of crept in, hasn't it, over the last, last few years. What a, what a strange People event. queuing outside of supermarkets for five hours and then and then mobbing through the doors just so that they can buy a half price 95 inch television or um, <laughs> oh whatever. is that right all oh, right tell me where to queue you know um <laughs> but uh yeah and also at this time of year i mean it's quite it, maybe think about just rejoicing in creation a bit because although it's not the time of growth and fruitfulness we think of the spring but there's some beautiful um natural elements out there which you can bring back into the house without sort of causing disturbance I and mean, there's lovely berries on some of the trees at the moment there's love some of the the seed heads from some flowers that have gone are just gorgeous aren't they i mean even like the, the cow parsley and the hogs weed that's around it leaves this beautiful seed thing you can bring into the house and just enjoy what god's provision really and that's a nice antidote isn't it to consuming more top tip for children's activity for christ the king um, we are blessed at the moment in this time of year. Um, we've got um, our boricultural fireworks. The leaves on the trees are going yellow and they're going gold and they're going red and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So go out with the kids, collect some of those um, and make them into a, the shape of a crown. Some of the leaves are actually very well suited for that sort of work. Um, and you can draw that um, connection with the children as you're picking these leaves up um, and as you're sticking them on the sheet um, to, to do that, to um, make that, that particular connection. And that works really well. No, I like that. It's a good, good idea, though, isn't yes, it? Beautiful yeah. time, you know. I must say, you've, been, you've incorporated a lot of children's craft activities into this particular video it's got a whole side job I didn't, didn't realize are you, are you sort of gearing up for a um a messy church or something just well <laughs> diocesan youth advisor right. things once you reckon for 12 years so right. okay um yeah i mean naturally i incline to to the more the teenager stuff but yeah. at the same time i did work closely with my um my children's work colleagues um and so yeah i picked oh. up a few tips here and there uh, I, 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 really, I like your idea of reminding us, you know, because children love to do things and they make stuff, craft and so on. And it's very easy to buy in these rather horrible, unrecyclable plastic sort of things, aren't they, for craft? You know, excuse me, 
turn off my phone. And, uh, <laughs> but it, it seems nutty to me because you, you're just bringing this pla non-degradable plastic. Uh, and actually the children don't, it's not tactile, they don't like it, you know, why do that? So but out, outside you've got these, all these beautiful things, the leaves, the twigs, the moss, the sticks, even this time of year. So yeah, yep. make advantage of that, I think. Good idea, man. And if you want to make that connection, um, you can, as a lay leader, um, or as an ordained leader, um, ask people with a connection to your church who've got children to, to go and do that and then bring it to the actual service. Bring their, 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 um, their picture of a crown uh, made out of those autumnal leaves so that you can make that link. Um, and that will work in a Eucharist, that will work in an all age worship. If you're gonna do it on Zoom, if you're gonna do it on um, live streaming it on Facebook, or you're gonna record a YouTube video, then you know you can still you can still do that. Just be careful when it comes to recording children. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure that you've got all the permissions in place um, to do that. Um, but yeah, you can phrase it in this way. We're gonna go on a treasure hunt. We're going to go on a treasure hunt and we're going to look for gold. And when we find it, we're going to make a crown for Jesus to wear to remind us that he is the king of all creation. And therefore, his crown is made out of the parts of his creation. Love no, no. I, I, I'm going to write it down now, actually. Because I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to task you both, task you both with making one of these crowns for the next video, so that when we get to December, we've all got a crown made from these. Because I just, th I think we should be wearing one. So that's my task to you. It wasn't. It wasn't supposed to be something that you can wear. It was supposed to be like a picture. You stick no, it on a piece no, of paper. I think you can make one so that you can wear it. And I really. <laughs> Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah, I think we should all have one. Creation crown, okay. Creation crown before the next video. <laughs> I like it. It's good thought. One thing I did was thinking about um, we during lockdown. One of the things that came out of lockdown was this um, was almost kind of relaxing of everything. So creation seemed to just kind of take the start taking back over again. Um, people began to slow themselves down. People began to uh, to chill because they had no choice. And actually, there's part of part of uh, part of me that that quite enjoyed that. And I think we all did. Actually, there was a there was a bit. But um, we were talking earlier about remembrance and slowing ourselves down and stopping and remembering um, on the eleventh of the eleventh. Uh, and I wonder whether whilst we remember that time um you know those that we've lost those that have fallen those uh, our creation and so on and so forth i wonder whether we can also remember ourselves and that's that time of slowing down that time of you know taking stock and just being a bit more aware of our own selves in that process as well so when you stop on the 11th and maybe maybe we can do it on a regular maybe it could be a regular thing you know just give yourself five minutes in the week to slow down to stop and remember that calm that actually lockdown forced upon us mm. just a thought <laughs> yeah it was a good time wasn't it in in, in those ways you know for the i think yeah. just seeing people outside being for Stop from going out and then having the chance to go out and, and walk around and rejoicing in it really you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah there's that uh, there's the idea of um uh heart rhythm meditation um mm -hmm. which is about um listening to your heart and just relaxing and slowing yourself down and being aware of your heart beating and remembering that you are a part of God's creation and that you are wonderfully made and that even when you're upset and anxious or even when you're busy your heart is beating and every time it beats every time those ventricles flutter it's like a hymn of praise to God the creator mm -hmm. it's the rhythm that that underpins all of God's children 
um, this beating of the heart. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Mm. It reminds me of something that a friend of my brother said, slightly facetiously, because he, he was someone who quite avoided work like the plague. But he said, look, I'm a human being, not a human doing. So I thought it was quite funny in his context. But there is there's something great. There is something in that, isn't it? It's not about us doing stuff. We're loved because of who we are God's children and God's creation, not with our achievements, you know. And so, but, and as you say, you know, when you, when you just look at yourself and what God's given you, that's, that, you know, that's rather incredible. We, we rarely stop the doing to make that, those observations, I think, when we're worried about achieving this or that end. Guys, um, I we've done an absolutely stellar job today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add before we finish and say goodbye to everybody? The colour of the season is red, kingdom season. Okay. That's why I'm uh, wearing my red jumper. I don't normally dress up quite as um, as neatly. Yeah. As I do, <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah. Thought I'd reflect the uh, the red of the season. So um, your church is going to be using uh, red in its liturgical colours, and your vicar could well be wearing something around red. That connects, of course, remembrance and the, the feast of Christ the King um, in the same way, um, but also connects it through to the colours on the trees as we see those different um, red hues. But finally, just reminds us of Christ's sacrifice on the cross and that we can bring everything um, to him and lay everything at his feet in the confidence and in the knowledge um, that um, he has a plan and that he has redeemed us. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Do you want to say a prayer for us, Neil? Before yeah, we... of course. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise your name across the entire universe. Nebulas twinkle in the sky and stars explode at the sound of your very name. We give you thanks and praise that you came to earth, that you were made incarnate, part of God, your Father's wonderful creation. And we pledge ourselves in you to its care and to promoting within your church the principles of stewardship and sustainability. Help us this from November to remember the sacrifice of so many on the fields of battle, but also to remember that all power and authority comes from you and that ultimately your great commandment is this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. In Jesus' name, in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. And we will see everybody again for December. Hey. <laughs> With our crowns. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.